On the phone, I have Lenny Shaw. He knew Elliot Roger. Lenny, I'm going to talk to you first. Did, okay. he dis did he discuss this with you, this feeling of being rejected by women and his, his intense desire to have social contact? Oh, yes. Uh, I uh, um, uh, saw Elliot, met Elliot about uh, maybe seven or eight times, maybe at the most ten times. And, yes, uh, that was a, a, a nearly constant uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, refrain of his. Now, my understanding is that he complained about not having social interaction, yet the evidence of it, say, in his calendar is that he was busy all day in social interactions, and other kids tried to reach out to him, and he was the one rather being sort of rejecting. Did you see that sort of thing? Well, he was. Uh, you would immediately see how awkward, uh, how, how awkward he was in just about any situation, and and how shy he was, and how he was kind of afraid to mix in. Now, let me just quickly add, he didn't. Uh, talk about his uh, unusual, to put it mildly, feelings about women to just about anyone. Uh, um, our, our mutual friends had, had had indicated that I was cool, and uh, and um, so he he felt free to express his wilder fantasies. Did you ever try to get him to mental health professionals? Did you ever want to report him to the police? Uh, it was not. I didn't feel. That I knew him well enough. I did not know his family at all. Uh, um, our mutual friends were people about his age. I met; uh, these were uh, f uh, former students of mine who are now adults. Were and they concerned about him? Oh, they, they were always concerned about him. So, and and uh, Lenny, my understanding is that when you heard this happen in Isla Vista, you knew immediately it was him. Oh yes, yes, yes. I knew I, immediately it was him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I go ahead. Sam. Yeah, Lenny. Okay, so the, the, this guy that we see in his manifesto and in, in his video, he seems very confident. But then we also hear people describe him as awkward and shy. Was he a combination of both? Was he the, the 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 guy that you saw in the video, or did you see a different version of Elliot? Well, he was both of those things, but uh, he was also. Um, I did see him on more than one occasion, actually with tears in his eyes. Now, I'm not mm. trying to humanize him. He was still uh, crying. He wasn't out now crying, but his eyes were moist. He was still talking about, you know, about his own, uh, about himself, and he was still feeling sorry for himself. But he did show some emotion. He wasn't... Uh, Always the person that you, that scary person that you see in that, in, in particular that final video. Thanks, thanks, Lenny. He may not have been without emotion, but he was without empathy, at least mm -hmm. towards the ends here. Judy, you're nodding at that. I am, and I'm thinking back to the last block where we talked about the fact that this narcissism is part of his profile, but yes. where does it come from and how does it play into the fact that he wanted to commit a mass murder? And this is where the research actually shows us some really interesting things because people who tend to go and shoot up schools and movie theaters are people who are single, young, white males who tend to come from affluent families. And these types of people are more likely to take their personal pain out on the entire world, thinking that the world owes them something Whereas when you look at all the other social demographics, people can be violent when they get to that point, but they tend to just aggress on intimate partners and family members. And they're, try, they're trying to, the violence is part of their survival mechanism, not as right. part of some sense of entitlement.